Uh, We're videoing. <laughs> 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 It's, it's, it's going to be in your beautiful. bloopers. She's beautiful. We all get distracted. It's okay. Yeah. Welcome back to Christina's Garage Gearhead and Training. We are here for day two of SEMA. I have a couple interviews that I wanted to do today, but let's get going and see what we can find. I was coming out this direction to meet up with another official Patriot Gear ambassador, but I keep missing him every time I go by the booth. So I'm gonna check out these cars while I'm out here. If you thought we couldn't get more lifted vehicles, well, we got a whole bunch more. I like the colors on this one. There's texture on it. I don't, I'm assuming that's like a, I don't know. That's not a car. I don't think, oh, and then more lifted trucks. They have some other Outland vehicles to be able to go outside. I'm assuming that's what they mean by outland. I'm gonna walk around here. Oh, that's really cool. It's got a big awning. That one's got like a solar thing. All the Jeeps. The rooftop tents, man. I really like the rooftop tents. I need to get a trailer with a tent on it. If my husband is watching, <laughs> I, I doubt he'll watch this whole thing. Surprise myself for Christmas, maybe? I don't know. Oh, how fun! I like that. On an actual boat. Let's check out and see how what they've done to this thing. I don't know what kind of boat. A pontoon boat? I saw the other day, if you watched my video from the first day, there was a truck that looked like it had a boat in the back of it as the truck bed. These are really fun. I like how they're all, all the cars out here are very different from each other. And I think that's it seems like the theme with SEMA is that people are pushing the envelope and doing new things and they're showing, showcasing the edgy new things that they're, that they're given a try. I'm assuming that's uh, solar. Oh, well, that's a Jeep, a big Jeep. I've never seen a Jeep that big before. Oh, and it's got, I didn't even realize that. I was walking past it. I didn't realize that's actually all connected. That's huge. As always, the color. I love the blue. It's got the lights on top. Massive tires. And rooftop tent. That seemed very quick. Honestly, I'm underwhelmed with all of that. I, I thought there would be a lot more. I'm gonna head back through and I think I'm gonna go back to Central Hall because there's at least two people that I wanna see if I can interview if they're there and if they're available. This is Bailey. I was told by another person that there was a father-daughter build and I had to come over here and speak with you guys. Would you mind telling me what what we've got here? We have a 1976 square body Chevy. Why did you choose this truck to do together? Um, so when me and my dad were first trying to find out what my first vehicle was gonna be, I knew I wanted a truck and then he's like, and then I went to a few car shows and I saw a few square bodies. And I'm like, okay, I want a square body. And my dad's like, okay, go online, screenshot 10 photos of a truck that you want. And I wanted the trim and I wanted the stamp on the back that said Chevrolet. So, and then we went to Tennessee. Well, we went to Facebook Marketplace first and we picked out 10 trucks to go see in Tennessee because they're usually all nice down in Tennessee. And we uh, went to the first one, it was a beater. There was all, it was all rust and then the second one was this one and it was all right white and uh, 
I fell in love with it as soon as we saw it. That's awesome. And we brought it home. How long did it take for you guys to finish it to get it to this point? Um, so the first few months of the two years that we were working on it were kind of slow because it was not supposed to be this. It was just supposed to be normal height with uh, white and patina to make it look like older and rust. I like yeah. patina. Yes, it's it was my favorite. But uh, it was a few, it was a uh, on and off for a few months, and then Airlift said, "Hey, you want to be sponsored by us?" And we're like. Yes, and he's like, you're coming to SEMA then. We're like, great. So once we got that, it snowed bald, and then we had to get a rendering to show oh, to, other, yeah. to get other sponsors. So we got that made, and the artist, he said, this thing looks way too good to be patina. And I'm like, and then my mom saw it, and she's like, nope, shiny, you ain't, you're not doing patina, so. That's how that happened. And do you like the paint now? Oh, I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah cuz I've I've seen patina. I didn't know it was called patina. Yeah. Uh, for people who don't know what patina is, could you describe what that is? It's not rust. It's like sunbaked. That's what I like to call sunbaked. It's like the original state that you yeah. find it in. And like how do you do you just like seal it off how it is? How does that usually work with patina? Um sometimes you can get like uh, not matte shiny come like it's like matte shiny stuff I don't know what it's called Gibbs it's called Gibbs it's Gibbs and uh, you can uh, wipe that on and it's usually preserved and then it'll get more sun baked if you take care of it so that's awesome I, I really do like the color I like greens and blues myself Yep, it's my favorite color and you mentioned how much experience did you have when you first started this project zero well I grew up around cars. Uh, me and my, my dad and mom own a junkyard and a transmission shop. Cool. Yep. So I've always been around them and going to car shows and races and stuff like that. But I didn't have that much experience in the beginning. But now you feel pretty confident. I know what I'm doing, kinda. I still YouTube and my dad. That's awesome. And yeah, cause like this channel, I'm trying to. I don't know much of anything mm -hmm. and it's cool to hear from other people that have worked on projects with their dad or yeah. like and, and not really starting from a place of having like a ton of experience and trying to encourage other people that might not have any experience or very little experience yeah. that they can also work on a project. Oh, how old are you? I'm 17. I got the truck when I was 14, 15 in the winter and um, I'm 17 now. That's so cool. 16 when I finished it. Now do you want another one after this one? I do, I want a Suburban, a 52 Suburban. A 52 Suburban. Look it up. Are you already are you already looking towards getting oh, it? No. no. We're gonna wait a little on this yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> wait till after college? Oh, I'm not going to college, I'll probably go to a tech school. Cool, yeah. well I mean that still technically is. Yeah, college. What? So what are your goals then? Um, I may do fabrication with metal. I really like doing the bead rolling. It's you know, it's I don't know what it is. When we do the tour, you can show okay, me. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's basically a sheet of metal, and you want to make indents into it to okay. make it rise or sit lower. I'll show you it. It's super cool. It's super fun, too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking up, we'll do a tour right now. Yeah. Cool. So we're starting in the cab? Yep. Do you want to slide in right over here? Wow. How long did it take for you guys to do the interior? So uh, Trent Trick Upholstery, he's one of our good friends, and uh, I got sponsored by Apex Leather, and they gave me all the leather, and he put it all together, and he made this gorgeous, gorgeous interior. Wow, the detail. Yes, there's That's a amazing. lot of detail in here. And it smells here. good. They can't, they can't smell it through the video, but it's like leather. Fresh. It smells so good. I got an iPad up in there. Do you want to go look at that? Oh, right up in the dash. Yep. So, or in the, what do you call that? Visor? Yep. What, what do you use that for? Um, to, so I have airlift on it to make it go up and down. Got it. That made, I didn't even know what airlift was. So, because it's low, could you describe that? Because I didn't even know, like, what that was. Um, so, you have bags. You have, like, a bag system, and they, you have a tank in the back. I'll show you it later. It fills up with air, and then they go into the bags to make it go higher, and then you can push buttons to go make it go lower. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Because I've always wondered, 
I asked uh, a gentleman the other day, how do you move it around? Like speed bumps would be scary for oh, me. Oh, it's very scary. And so that makes a lot of sense. And I didn't put two and two together. So yeah, um, would you like to show us that next? Yeah. So if you come back here, that's my frame up in the bed. In the bed of the truck, yep. that's cool. And then this right here is the tank, right behind here. And then you have the module, and then you have the two compressors that suck air into the tank. And you control all that from the computer that's in the visor? I have a remote, and I can, it's Bluetooth, so I could do either or. If I wanted to do it outside of the truck, I could take my iPad out. But if I wanted to do it inside the truck, I have like a little remote. How high does it go? It goes pretty high. Like, I don't know the inches, but it goes pretty high. I mean, it looks ridiculous when it's like that, but it goes up. That's so cool. Ride height is like four inches. Okay. So whenever I'm driving, like four inches. It's not bad. You're not afraid of speed bumps at that point. You're, you're still you're Yeah, close. you still get scared. That's um, bead rolling. So essentially, you take a big sheet of metal, and you have a bead roller. I don't know. What, like, you, it has dies. Oh, and you put okay. the metal in between the dies, and you have a foot pedal, and you push the metal through it, and it pops up if you want it to go up, or the metal can pop down if you want it to go down. That's cool. Right here, it's popped up. It gives it all that like texture and shape that yeah. I didn't know. Body lines. How... It makes it more sturdy, essentially. You have oh, to have his body lines to make it more sturdy. It helps the integrity of yes. this. Wow, I thought it would do the opposite, actually, so that, that's really cool. Yep. That's more of the bead rolling. Those are wheel tubs. We had to make firewall. Firewall. I never realized that it helps the integrity of it, and I didn't realize all so that goes strength. into it. That's so cool. What do you got under the hood? LS6, and then we have a 4L60 transmission. That's so cool. Why the red? It's a very contrasting color. It's red just, goes with everything. Yeah. It's a Chevy it, color too. Chevy. Yeah, it's, it be, looks cool. You could have a red motor in a yellow car. It's still a good. Yeah, that's And awesome. that was, you this thing was going to be patina. This truck was going to be patina, and then Mom shot that idea down when the when the um, rendering came in. And uh, I I was really thinking we was going to pull it and paint it interior color. It's very beautiful. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Bailey, for giving us a tour. I <clears throat> my favorite part is probably opening this up and smelling that leather. I'm glad you got that to see it. That was my favorite part out of all of it. So you were mentioning that next project is gonna be kind of further down the road. Do you have anything that you're gonna be doing for this? Are you gonna submit it in any more shows or anything like that? Okay, so I'm going to Maggie Valley. It's called Mini Chuck Nats. It's in South Carolina. I 100% go there. It is so beautiful there. No stoplights, so you don't have to stop and keep going it's when you're cruising. It's so, it, I love it there. So we're going there and I'll be in an airlift booth there. Perfect. But it's, it's a really chill environment to be around. Very cool truck show. I love it there. I've only been to North Carolina once. It's Might very, have to go back again. <laughs> yes. I love that show. Um, good Guys in Columbus. And then uh, Camp and Drag, where you take your truck and you camp and you cruise around. That's really fun. That's really fun. Where is that at? Indiana. I'm, it's pretty close to Ohio. Got it. That's really cool. And something your dad mentioned, you, you aren't a shop. Like, could you, like... Just, uh, he told me, well, we're not a shop, but we do own a, a town and country. But it, that was not, that was not... Um, affiliated with this. You're not building cars for other people. This no. was a personal build. How did the airlift, mm -hmm. how did they hear about you guys? Uh, so Trent and Trish, they uh, they were looking for, they've been our longtime friends with us, and they were looking for a uh, truck to, for airlift or for a booth in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sent out submissions and airlift reached out to us and they're like, hey, you want to be in our booth? That's so cool. Yep. So now we're here. And how, if people want to follow you, what's the best way for them to see see what you're doing next? The Instagram is Boneyard Bailey. So I'll make sure to put that and the information for Airlift. Yep. We'll put it in the description so that if you guys are interested in learning more, you can give Bailey a follow and also check out Airlift. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. And I look forward to watching the rest of your journey. Thank you.
Now I'm heading over to the Art Walk. One of my friends, Ryan, is over there. We're gonna see if he's available so that we can interview him about his art. Well, this is Ryan. It just so happens we're also in uh, Ian Wentz, the Free Collective Coaching Group. I didn't know you were gonna be here. It's really cool to actually meet you in person and see your art in person because we've been kind of talking a little bit. Yeah, we've been back and forth through the Free Collective and just kind of getting that relationship and getting to know each other a little bit and then meeting each other is been a great experience. And now we're both here. You have a booth. I, I don't know how the heck I got here. You know, like just, it's it's so surreal to be here and, and to be able to meet in person. And I actually get to see your art up, up front. Well, it's personal. So yeah, yeah, it's it's been for me. It's been a long journey, but we've been here at SEMA now for a few years, and it's it's been a great. They've been great to us as a, me as an artist, and then we we turned that favor and what they can have as an experience with the art walk here. That's so cool. And, and your wife mentioned that you've been doing art for a very long time before creating Sin Customs hot rod car art. Yep. I started out with graphic design and illustration and did that for about 15, 20 years and then just kind of got burned out and I told her that I was going to go back into doing my own art. And when I did it, I was like, I'm passionate about cars, so I'm going to just create art about cars and I want to do it with an automotive medium. And so this is where it kind of led to doing it on the street signs and having all of my art on either the aluminum panels or the road signs. The biggest thing for me is being far away, we're going to do a close up in a second, but it looks like you actually do metal work to make it look like it stands out. But when you come close, that's actually not the case. No, it's, it's actually just in my process of painting. I layer everything so it's building upon the layers and with the reflective signs, it makes everything kind of pop off and look three-dimensional versus just a flat painting. That's awesome. Well, would you mind showing us around? We can check some of them well, out. Let's do that. Awesome. So this oh. painting is called Victoria. It's about a train that's not about 15 minutes from my house. When I got this sign, I've had this railroad crossing sign for about 10 years just hanging in my shop. I always knew that I wanted to put a train on it. I just never found the right train. So we found this train in a small town called Victoria. It's town of 16 people and so the painting is all done with automotive urethanes the uh, canvas and the, the sky is all watercolor kind of I treat it like a watercolor painting using the automotive paints and then the, the train is all done with a dark metallic and it, the, I do all my I do all the custom framing for the piece so that it really fits and plays with the theme of the the painting being on railroad crossing sign. And I I asked you the other day, like, how long do you think it took? Because I know you um, said you're working on multiple projects I, at I once. I work multiple projects at a time, so I would say it probably around 120 hours went into this particular painting. But I also combine it, when I'm working a painting, I'll do one or two at a time. And we'll, I'll go back and forth between those paintings. Because one's drying, I'll work on the other. Do you think you'll do another one like this in the future? There will always be something like it or even better than it in the future. Is the GT40 your favorite? Um, it's a toss up. I, it's one of my favorites because it's one of the newer pieces that I just created. But this one was done on a one way sign and then the, the car is all hand painted even though when you're looking at the painting it looks like it's glass and it's super smooth. Just due to my process of using the automotive urethanes and I clear coat over the top, it eliminates all of my brush strokes in the painting. So they look like they're, they're glass when they're all completed and done. But this one was the same thing, it's a custom built frame that was designed to fit with the theme of the car. So I carried the stripes from the car onto the edges of the painting and then even threw out some of the details on the frame. Oh, I didn't even realize with that with the frame. I don't. <laughs> That's, that is really cool. The attention to detail is amazing. I'm, I'm just absolutely blown away. And uh, it honestly, it doesn't say enough in pictures. You have to see it in person. They, they are very hard to capture in pictures. Even when I'm photographing my paintings, I have to photograph them outdoors in the sunlight to even try and capture the metallic paints, the reflective backgrounds, all of that it's best seen in person and to really experience them you have to see them in person 
And you have a bunch of other things here too. Uh, like you do a variant of different types of art. Like I saw you did a helmet over here. You sold the other one yesterday, so I didn't get to put that one on camera. But this is sick. So this helmet is all outside of the red and then the white, which was sprayed on there. The rest of it is all done by hand using a paintbrush in varying techniques. Did you have a specific inspiration for, for this helmet? Like no, why? This, <laughs> this particular helmet was, I just got the helmet. It was given to me as part of a art exhibit. They were, the canvas was helmets. And so I just kind of felt this is what the helmet needed and it's where I took it. It's beautiful. My, my favorite is probably the, the scales. I love, I love dragons. So the scales, like it just, it, you, you were able to put so much depth into it. Like all of everything that you're painting, it, it doesn't look 2D. It looks 3D the way that you paint everything. It's awesome. Thank you. Do you have any projects or things that you're working on for the future? I always have new projects going on. Like right now, my commission schedule is booked two months out. So if you're looking for custom pieces, you're going to have to wait a little bit. But it's best to get on my schedule as soon as possible so that wait doesn't get longer. But so there's, there's always going to be new pieces. Um, I'm always getting new, picking up new signs. I'm always coming up with new ideas. And we'll see what the future holds. And if people want to get a custom piece or if people want to follow you, like how do they get in touch with they you? They can uh, get in touch with me through my social media at Sim Customs, or they can visit my re website, hotrodcar.com. Perfect. And I'll add that stuff into the description so that if people are interested in learning more, they can follow it. That's I'm, awesome. I'm really excited and sending positive thoughts to having a bigger booth in the future and the wall being completely empty by the end of the show because these, these are really cool. I love them. Well, thank you so much, you, Ryan. Christina. It was great, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Sounds good. I'm heading over to House of Color to interview Munch. I met him the other day, and I really wanted to ask him about a car, so let's check it out. I'm here with Munch and Javier. I walked by House of Color the other day and saw this car. I thought it was absolutely beautiful, but I knew nothing about paint and pinstriping and all the really cool stuff and I learned that this was made for your family. Would you mind sharing more about that? Yes. So, so when I bought it, it had nothing to do with my family. He agrees. You know, I wanted to build something cool, something unique, um, you know, and, and being in the industry, your dream is always to have something personal, you know, that you can build and create and call your own. So when we were going through the whole process, you know, we got to the stage of, okay, it's in color. Now what do we do? So. You know, we put our minds to it, <clears throat> and Javier being a, a, you know, my like my brother, we're over an artist, like in his own right. You know, we put our brains together. He goes, "What about adding your wife to it, right?" Like we, yeah. well, as speak an artist, on as an artist, like I'm always trying to find the best type of artwork, the best subject to paint. So I always go and find what the person's all about, and. Family is one of the first things you think about. And I know he's a big family guy, so it made it a little easier. So some of the artwork that we have in there, it's symbolic of his kids, his family, and uh, that's that's where that came from. So I love that, because I'm, yeah. I'm building my 69 Camaro in my dad's memory. So I came here because he had a can of paint that he had chosen for me based on the descriptions I gave him. And the paint was open, and, and I heard from the other guy, it might have been House of Color. So that's why I actually came here to begin with, is to ask, how do I even find, like, is this, did it come from you guys? How do I get more? Because it had been opened already and like partially used. So it's kind of cool that like, I feel like we were came, we came together for a reason. You like came to the right spot. I mean, yeah. if you're saying it's House of Color, obviously this is where we're at, right? Yeah. And um, I'm sure if it's something that was out there at some point, we still have it or can make it, which is cool. The new line, you know, allows us to build a color too, and and help you probably guide you to at least guide you to get the paint you need. That's awesome. Which is pretty neat. So. Well, and um, really quick, would you mind telling me if uh, people want to follow you or uh, see what projects you're working on next? Uh, where should they check you out at? Well, to be honest, guys, <laughs> no. Um, so, I am on Instagram as Juan Munch Gonzalez, all one word. 
Um, you can see a lot of our, even our combo art together and stuff we've done throughout the years. We've done some pretty cool projects together. And, and I mean, I owe a lot of what I've done in this industry to this guy right here. So I would follow him, not me. Thank you. You know? Yeah. But you got to say your name, bud. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm Javier Soto, and my Instagram is uh, Javair. It's H uh, O V A I R. Awesome, yes. and I'll make sure to add that in the description Perfect. at the end. Um, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and share your story, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. I can't wait to yeah. see what you guys we do gotta next. We got to give everybody the peace. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting older, guys. The fingers don't work that well. Look at that beard. I love that. It's great. <laughs> One of the gentlemen with House of Color, we were talking after the interview. He was the one that actually introduced me to Munch and even like brought it up that I could interview him. So I'm grateful for that. He also, trying to make sure I walk not into people. Uh, he, he's going to introduce me to another friend of his. He showed me a picture of his truck. And I'm heading over to that gentleman's booth now to hopefully meet up for an interview and get a tour of his truck. I, I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's really cool. I'm here with Alex with yes. Hopos. 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 Yes. I can't pronounce words. Close enough. <laughs> um, but I was told by uh, Gilbert at House of Color to come over here. He showed me a picture of your truck. Yeah. And I knew I had to interview you. Perfect. I'm so glad. My number one question is why? <laughs> yes. Yes. And I get it because what is it? That, that's been my number one question. Like, what is this? But why for me was I build cars for a living. I see cars all the time. I do cars all the time. My biggest issue with SEMO is people would see something and they would just copy it and change ah. the color and do this and do that. And it's like, when you walk SEMA, I love SEMA, but it, it just started getting very repetitive for me. Being here for, I don't know, my 13th or 14th year, I was like, man, I wanna build something for myself. Something that, just different, you know, weird. My whole goal on this was like, I wanted to exaggerate a Hot Wheel, like a real life, cause it's almost the size of a Hot Wheel. It's like, it's 10 feet. So I wanted a Hot Wheel looking car, very exaggerated body lines. And I'm just like, I'm gonna build what I want not even regarding what anyone else has to say about it or anything. And it's been working in my favor, I guess, so far. And you mentioned that you weren't even into lowriders before. No, no, I wasn't. When I first started, um, I was just a car guy. I like cars. I tinkered with the Hondas, which is first full circle. I tinkered with Hondas, because at that time, that's what I could afford. You know, I was building in my means, and I would just do what I could afford at 17, 18 years old. Um, then I had the opportunity to jump in the company with my dad, and I started working knew nothing about low riders, which everyone thinks like, oh, you grew up around it, you know everything. I didn't. You know, I started and I would sweat the shop, picked up tools for three, four years. And uh, finally, you know, I just was like, if that guy can do it, I could probably do it too. And, and that's just kind of been my whole thing in life. It was like, if that guy can do it, nothing's stopping me. Just got to learn. You got to put in the time, put in the effort and learn a little bit. And that's kind of just what's brought me here now. Like you said earlier, full circle, started learning and I learned how to do a lot of TIG welding, a lot of fabrication off of YouTube, watching other people. And then now I have my YouTube channel, you have yours. And now I'm doing how to tech articles on YouTube as well. And it's like, it's kind of weird how that works, you know? And it's been great. It's been really great. You're giving back too. And that's one thing like I've been trying to tell people, like I, I don't know how to give back at this point, but I'm like collaborating so that I can learn another. But you too. are giving back right now though. Like, you're like indirectly. Yeah, you're learning, but at the same time, you're giving out the information you're learning directly to the channel. So it's like, it's ideal. It's it's really cool. And I, I remember learning a lot on YouTube too. So yeah. like, it's it's really neat to be able to see someone here, like, and be able to hear your story. That's like the important thing to me. Yes. Like, I don't know all the things about the cars, <laughs> yeah. but understanding why and your story is how you got here and why is this car important to you. To me, that's really cool, especially here at SEMA. People are doing different things. They're going outside yes. of the box and yes. they're not just doing it just to like, yeah, they're trying to go out and just to kind of do it, but it's yeah. not well, Some people try to build in the trendy style. And it's funny because it just so happened to be, I wanted to build different, but it, the K car scene right now is become, becoming the trendy style. So I just got lucky. I was kind of ahead of it at the time. I already, two years ago, now they're blowing up right now. So I got really lucky on it, but yeah, I just, for me, if you're building something for yourself, just build what you want. 
you know, build whatever you feel, who cares, do it for yourself, because in the end of the day, you're the one putting the keys in, you're the one filling it up, you're the one driving it. So build whatever you want to build. You don't have to go and, you know, try to keep up with the Joneses, build in your means too, you know? Got it. And you said it's a K car? It's, yeah, they call them K cars. So K cars is the regulation in Japan, because these, these two were imported from Japan, they're okay. right-hand drive. K car fits the regulation of under 660 cc's, I believe, to be, from what I understand, is like tax exempt for a certain thing. Oh, so the okay. smaller you have it, it's like a smaller carbon footprint, that type of thing. Oh, okay, got so, it. So yeah, it falls under the K car category. So, but yeah, this is actually a Honda Acne. This is a right hand drive imported from Japan. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, can you give us a tour? Yeah, of course, I'll show you. Awesome. So on the front side, I kept pretty much everything stock. Um, I did shave and debadge the front, took away the windshield wipers and the filler and the antenna on here. Everything's been shaved. What I did is I actually kept the stock bumper here, kept the stock bumper, did a cutout on it, um, and I did a full custom grill on the front side using four of the rigid 360 uh, new lights that they have. And then on the bottom side, I'm running all, uh, I believe, 22 total rock lights from Rigid as well. So I guess one of the first thing I noticed is that you got the bucket seats that are like bright yellow. Bright yellow, yeah. I went with the bright yellow. Um, just wanted something really just to stand out. And I went with the full bucket seat on the driver's side and just honestly, the spacing was just so small in here. So I wanted to go with a half bucket on the other. Uh, these are status racing seats. I got these from my good buddy, Neil Chin. Inside I have a push start so i convert this over to push start oh, um, fancy yeah and, and this is actually gps tracker as well and this is uh through a company called jdi and this was their first one that they did right here uh kind of a prototype version of it uh good buddies of ours but yeah this thing is great because it actually gives me gps tracking location speed i could disable fuel pump while driving so it's just a really good safety feature That's to have cool. i also got a custom speedometer in here because these are imported from japan so they are uh, kms but I did a custom miles per hour speedometer with our logo in there and then the wire wheel inside there. So that's a one of one gauge that I had made for it. The little details. Little details, I yeah. On the interior, I didn't go too crazy on it because I do plan on driving this pretty much to and from work all the time. Um, but I just restored the whole interior and uh, just cleaned it up, went with the suede, suede headliner and then just updated all the lighting inside to rigid as well. What is the gas mileage like? Uh, you know, I've never actually tracked the gas mileage, but I know about like, 36 bucks fills me up for a week and I do about 45 miles each way so that's pretty good. it's pretty good yeah it don't go very fast but it's fun it's functional you, you know what in something like this I'm not looking for speed I was just looking to cruise it and have the arm out the window and just kind of drive turn the tunes up and I love have that. fun and then I noticed on the outside you got so much like the body yeah that's cool yeah so I did a custom wide body kit on it um, I did all out of 14 gauge sheet metal Again, I just wanted something different. So I didn't want to do something that I could just click and buy off of a website. Cause that means if I could do it, someone else can do it as well. So I just wanted to show kind of some of the fab skills and machinery that we have in our facility. And I was able to custom laser cut out my body kit, bend everything and put it all in place right here. But yeah, this is sitting about 15 inches wider than stock. And I went with uh, Luxor wire wheels on there. And then I did a custom set of spinners or floaters if you like with our logo in here and you have a bike in the back yeah so our good buddies over at jackrabbit sent me over their new jackrabbit xg um and this is a new e-bike that to me i had to have because it was it was still miniaturized and it fit in the back perfect and it just kind of showed that you know i'm open to different technology and different stuff you know ev thing is kind of like ev cars and like electric bikes are kind of like a, the, the solar subject right now, you know, in, in most cases, but I want to showcase it because I was, you know, I'm open to new technology. Plus it's fun. Like, it I looks mean, like, does it go pretty fast? It goes 20 miles an hour. So oh it's pretty God. quick. Yeah. <laughs> no, this thing's been great. Hydraulics. Uh, I'm assuming it has to be lifted up to move. Yeah. As this thing lays on the ground right here. Uh, we did, I had to do hydraulics on it just because again, I want it different. Everyone would normally think this would be on air ride. We manufacture hydraulics, so I want to toss a four pump hydraulic setup in here and everything that you see in here, uh, we manufacture in our facility. So I wanted just something simple, but something clean, but also a little crazy. So that's why I did this. Uh, I get about four and a half inches of lift in the front, about four and a half in the rear as well. And that gives me the opportunity or the ability to lift up and drive away. So that's what's uh, suspension. Then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the hydraulics is what lifts the, the car up. Um, it just makes it adjustable. Plus, 
more than anything, it's a wow and cool factor, you know? So that's, you don't have anything like coilovers or leaf springs that's instead of those things you use this system? Yeah, so instead of having like your traditional coilover where wherever you set that you're, you're stuck at, this has the ability to be able to adjust within that four inch range. So it gives me the ability to lay it out on the ground, lift it up to drive it away, and I can go anywhere in between that as well, so. That's so cool. I, I didn't, I, I just learned about this stuff today. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that it, it was something not in addition, it was just you do it different, completely different. Yeah, yeah, and, and like I said, most people want air ride, or we would think this would be on air ride, and that's the reason I went against the grain on that, and I went with hydraulics, because hydraulics are typically seen in low riders. So I kind of want to pay homage to like the wire wheels and what we do for a living. So I did the hydraulic setup, the wire wheels, and just kind of mash all these different genre of cars together in one, and just build something that for you know myself. He asked if I wanted to see it move, and I said, yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh! <laughs> are there, there buttons that you're pushing in there? What are you doing in there? So those are the switches that are right there. You might have scanned right past them in the beginning, oh, but... Oh, let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, I'll get out Ah, oh, I can see it. I just zoomed in. So you just push the buttons in the whole thing? Yeah, you tap Does the... Does the back go up too? Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. That's so much fun. I like the sound. Is, is that normal or do you add the sound to make it... So the sound that you're hearing is actually the hydraulic motor spinning the gear inside. So that's that, that whining noise you hear is actually the motor spinning up. That is so cool. Yeah. Makes it fun. What project are you working on next? Are you going to do more on this one or are you going to move on to another? There's a few little final touches I want to do on this, but for the most part, I just want to drive it. Um, I've been working on it for four months now, so I just my time right now is I want to jump on the road, cruise it, take it to and from work, throw my wife in there, you know. But as far as other projects, I do have, uh, I got a lot of vehicles, but I got one more lined up and I'm thinking that's going to be the next one for SEMA next year. Um, and uh, we got a few more lined up at the shop as well too. So can't really talk about those too much because those are kind of like incognito right now, yeah. but um, you guys will see them at SEMA next year for sure. And if someone wants to follow you and, and see what the projects that you're working on, as you give little sneak peeks, yeah. where should they follow you at? So I post daily on Instagram. So you can find us at uh, hoppos underscore Alex for Instagram. And on YouTube, you go Alex, Alex Hoppos 909. So those are my two that I'm on all the time. Um, also, our website for Hoppos is hopposonline.com. Perfect. And I'm going to add those into the description. So if you guys are interested, that they can check all that out. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Thank this you so great. much. I appreciate like, it. Like, I just want to see you, like, zoom off in it. You know? <laughs> I know. Me too. So, I can't awesome. wait to go cruise. We're going to go cruise the strip later. So it's going to be fun. This is Luis. We were about to start recording and then Nick Cannon came over. Yeah, I was psyched. I was like, oh my God, that's Nick Cannon. I was like, what do I do? That is so cool. Yeah. Well, like I was walking by, I did not realize that this is a Tesla. Yep. That's so cool. And then your friends were mentioning that you made it like for your wife. So could you tell us about it? Yeah, no, she's actually a big lowrider fan. I mean, she's not here, it was her birthday. <laughs> so she's a little under the weather, but um, she actually had the same vision as me as far as I don't want to waste gas and she drives miles. So she drives this daily 170 miles a day from San Jacinto, California, all the way to Torrance, California. That's so, crazy. Yeah. So we just built it economically and she picked every single color. She picked all the murals on it. She picked everything. So we, we do it together. That's amazing. Yeah. How long did it take for you guys to do it? Um, about like nine months total of like just raw um, working on the car. But, you know, it, it took about you know, about a quarter of a year to really put it all together. So you got it from Tesla. What 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 color was it when you first got it? It was actually the cherry red-ish that it came, but we just added, you know, candies and patterns. And, you know, for Jose from Custom, uh, from Jose Customs in uh, Paramount, California, he uh, actually designed the car himself. So we, we just said, we hear the colors, bam, 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 and he did it. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. And like, I didn't know it was a Tesla. Yeah. And it like legit looks like a low rider. I didn't even think about it when I walked by. <laughs> Everybody so, says that. Um, would you mind giving us a tour? Yeah, no, absolutely. This is the main focus of the vehicle for the SEMA show today. Um, Hoppos uh, actually did everything um, besides the engraving. That's uh, Dagodane. 
and he's the one that you know did the diamond cutting and all the plating for us. That's um, amazing. Yeah, but the airbrushing on the car, uh, which is also on here, it's uh, by Tony, and he's uh, he's one of my airbrushers that does the car. We also have these custom wheels, have floating floaters, so oh. they spin, yeah. The spinner wheels. Yeah, they're uh, they're actually called Enox. So Enox is that the yeah. official name for them? That's the I... official name. Okay. Of that kit, yeah. So they, I, I, I saw like people with uh, golf carts with spinner wheels. Oh yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. spinner wheels. <laughs> so that's that's so cool. Yeah. But other than that, we have a full custom interior, obviously custom paint. So all this stuff uh, we handpicked ourselves. Oh, it's like. Yeah. Her. Yeah, we have a shag carpet. I can ah. open the door for you if you want. Wow. So yeah, she picked all that trim. <laughs> and so after all the aesthetics, yeah, my girlfriend picked the whole thing. So That's so great. And so these images here, are they anybody specific? No, they're just Chicano art that I picked up. And my uh, airbrusher made, the, made it its own, you know. Wow. He doesn't like to copy the stuff. He said it was uh, completely airbrushed? Yes. Wow. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And then um, this one actually kind of looks like my girlfriend. They always say it's her, but you know, now we are saying it's her. Yeah, she's pretty. <laughs> she's pretty. Yes, she is. And then uh, we have back here a Vocal sound system, Utopia. Three amps and two 10 subwoofers. And if you really want to get in there, we actually threw the interior into the interior of the box. So we have wow. all the, the hexagons in there. The attention to detail just blows me away. Oh, yeah. And like all of the texture, how is it cleaning it? Oh, so far, we just got it back last week. So uh, we haven't cleaned it yet, but we'll see. <laughs> no, no dogs or kids are allowed in it. No dogs. No, we don't, we don't even take drinks in the car. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. But yeah, no. Uh, Chewy's uh, Auto Interior did that, and uh, CLJ Customs in uh, um, LA. He did our wiring and sound system setup. Wow, and the colors yeah. too. Yeah, that's no. great. Everything, everything designed by Carlos Lopez. <laughs> nice. What are your plans? next like uh, are you gonna do more to this car you do have another car plan well i mean i do want to start a truck and you know if elon's listening i want to test the, the cyber truck and you know we'll go crazy on it too but um for right now we're gonna keep adding details to this because we want to keep it up above the food chain right now you know <laughs> we want to make sure no one can beat us at shows and we're getting we're getting closer that's great yeah, but it if people want to follow you yeah. and see if they, when you get that truck mm -hmm. we're putting it out in the universe now when you get that truck <laughs> Where should people follow you? One Sexy Y, and that's the name of the car. So it's one O N E, and then Sexy, and then with an extra Y. So Got that's it. our that's our handle for Instagram. And right. then if uh, if you start doing a truck, will you start with that one? Um, with... I will probably start a new one. So we're okay. just not there yet until we get this truck. Put the I'll put the link in the description. I'll get the information for you so people are able to follow you. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. No, thank it, you it was so great. Much for like. The this is cool. Yeah, thank you. I mean, thank Nick you. Cannon stopped. I like, know. that's cool. <laughs> that's you had to make sure to get a picture because yeah. if, if you didn't get a picture, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So. That's right. Awesome. And then maybe we'll see what you have next year. Absolutely. All right. I got a ton of awesome interviews today, and I haven't eaten yet. It's a little bit early, like two, three o'clock, and I'm just gonna go eat. I have a a thing that I was invited to a little bit later. Uh, actually, two things I'm invited to. I'm going to stop now and uh, be able to take a breath. That way I can actually get this all up in time for you guys to see it before tomorrow. See you guys later.